ETs came to Earth with a warning, but the visit was covered up. This is what ex-Defense Minister claims. This is on Daily Star by Tom Towers. This is nothing new, but uh, we're covering it anyway. Aliens visited our planet, offering an apocalyptic warning for mankind, but their visit was covered up. This is what Paul Hillier, ex-Defense Minister of Canada, has told us. And he's also uh, said that if we keep on shooting down these uh, uh, space aliens' vehicles, extraterrestrial vehicles, what we know as UFOs, we may have an interstellar war on our hands, he said. That's an extraordinary claim, but he uh, will be coming up with the next video having to do with the uh, means by which, uh, for example, the United States has to hold off these uh, UFOs from uh, entering our areas, quote-unquote, for the lack of a better way to describe it, anyway. Um, so they've been visiting our planet, uh, claims that this has been going on for thousands of years. Uh, many people would say that they were, are the uh, Anunnaki or the Nephilim. And uh, Paul Hillier says that even if you walked by them on the street, you would not recognize them as being ETs because they look just like us. Now, do they look like us or, or do they, are they able to shapeshift to look like us? Uh, now, we know that, for example... From what uh, our friend and brother Stephen Ben Nun of Israeli News Live keeps, uh, kept, keeps telling us and informing us, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, were able to shapeshift and they would uh, take on the appearance of uh, uh, the husbands of, their, of the wives in order to, uh, to mate with the women they selected on earth. Uh, so, yeah, they're able to shape, shapeshift. Uh, as per uh, the Old Testament and ancient scriptures. Now, if these are the same type of aliens, they will be able to shapeshift. Uh, so let's go on to see what this warning has to do with telling us. Ex-politician Paul Hellyer claims to have evidence of at least four species of aliens that have been visiting Earth from, for decades. Now, if you see the video before this one, uh, it has to do with the Canadian government UFO uh, files. They've released files from 1967 to the 1980s, over 9,500 cases. I had picked one at random. I went to the files and we read one together having to do with the Falcon Lake UFO. And that happened to be one of the very uh, famous ones of Canada. It just, was just random that I picked it from Manitoba. It was just there in front of me on the map. I was looking for something concerning Montreal because I hadn't seen one myself. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't find one, so I picked one on the, on the page having to do with Manitoba, Lake, Falcon Lake. And uh, that's what we read. And there are hundreds, as we said, thousands, 9,500. So uh, I guess they'll be coming out with more after the 1980s up to, up to, to now. You know, that's another 30 years. So um, he claims that this has been going on for ages, and uh, everybody knows about this, but they're trying to cover it up. Paul Hale, your Canadian Minister of National Defense in the 1960s, argues that top government... So he was my Canadian... Uh, I'm Canadian as well, by the way. I, I do have Canadian citizenship. So he was Canadian uh, Minister of Defense when I was living there. So he said, with my family, of course, and he said decades ago, visitors from other planets warned us about the direction we were heading and offered to help. He said, instead, some of us interpreted their visits as a threat and decided to shoot first and ask questions after. Well, look, you know, we are humans and we are <laughs> the uh, apex of creation on our planet Earth. And, uh, of course, we don't like other people from other planets coming in and uh, invading us. That's just uh, normal. Uh, and we also saw that in the Falcon Lake uh, episode, the man was injured. He had radiation poisoning. So, obviously, these uh, ET uh, entities are not benevolent in every case. They're out to... Uh, perhaps uh, damage us, it looks like. 
So now, uh, he also claimed that trillions of dollars have been spent on so-called black projects to cover up extraterrestrial life. Paul Hellyer recalled one terrifying UFO encounter during the Cold War that triggered an investigation. He said, in one case of the cases during the Cold War in 1961, there were about 50 UFOs in formation flying south from Russia across Europe. I didn't even know about this. 50? Really? In formation? He said the Supreme Allied Commander was very concerned and was about ready to press the panic button when they turned around and went back over the North Pole. Bizarre, terrifying UFO encounter, this one during the Cold War. Uh, there are various, uh, I'll leave a link below, you can very, you see the various um, uh, f videos that you can see here with Paul Hellyer um, and also uh, an Apollo, uh, Apollo 15 astronaut, Al Warden. Uh, the first ever astronaut to perform a deep space walk. And he's, this is, he says the truth is out there and aliens do exist. Anyway, uh, they decided to do an investigation and they investigated concerning this um, 50 uh, UFOs that turned around towards the north. They decided to do an investigation. They investigated for three years and they decided that with absolute certainty that four different species at least have been visiting this planet for thousands of years. So, definitely we're going back to what we would say the Old Testament periods and uh, ETs, and let's remember the Book of Enoch uh, talks about the fallen angels and ETs and the Nephilim. And we also have that in the Holy Bible in Genesis. Uh, Halier said, that uh, the ETs travel to Earth from different star systems. He says many are being, beings are benevolent and the few of them are not. They come from various places. For a long while, I only knew about ones that came from different star systems uh, from uh, the Pleiades. There are extraterrestrials that come from Andromeda and ones that live on one of Saturn's moons, he says. All right. Uh, leaked footage emerged earlier uh, that supposedly showed alien wreckage from the notorious Roswell crash. In it, a mysterious individual holds up metal plates that appear to show handprints with six fingers. Strange symbols have been carved into the metal, supposedly in Greek letters, that spell out the word eleftheria, meaning freedom. So why would they use the Greek language, eleftheria, meaning freedom? Okay, maybe that was the name of their ship, and uh, they used the Greek language. Let's remember, let's remember the alphabet, the Aramaic la alf alphabet, and the Greek, the ancient Greek alphabet were the same. Uh, in Greek, we would say Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta. In uh, Aramaic, it was Aleph, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Delta. So you see that they were the same. And also, the time of the Exodus of Moses, they had the old Paleo Hebrew, which was the ancient Greek writing, and the mark that they put on the lentil and the doorposts of their houses was not just a, a slash of, of, uh, of the lamb's blood, you know, brushed on like a, a line, it was not, it was the mark of a T. The mark of a T, which was the last letter of the alphabet at that time, taf, taft or tau, meaning that's the end, the cross, this, which was, by the way, a symbol for the sign of the cross which means that they had one on the lentil and the doorpost, meaning three T's, one horizontal and two vertical lines, three T's, which were three symbols of three crosses. Anyway, that's our history. It's archaeology. It's anthropology. Um, we also have the, the uh, witness of the Tully. You'll see one of the videos before this today, the Tully papyrus of the uh, alien gods landed uh, at the time of uh, the ancient pharaohs in Egypt, they landed in the Giza Plateau, and they were called alien gods by the pharaoh who left his witnessing of their landing, and that they were the, uh, the overlords of Egypt. They were the overlords of Egypt, and whoever else was there was, of course, their slave, their servant. And he left a witnessing of all this, and he, it's in uh, the Tully Papyrus. And um, 
also one of the, the one of the recent finds having to do with a coin that was found discovered in Egypt which looks to be like a very strange head of an a bald head of a a be of, of a being with uh, bulging dark eyes uh, which looks like a like a alien gray so uh, all these are very strange findings and let's not forget the temple of uh, Seth in Abydos Egypt having to um, to do with those carvings of what looks like ancient uh, it is an ancient carving of course all the way back to uh, Pharaoh Nectanebo, who destroyed all the temples with um, pagan idols, except this one, because he says this is the uh, evidence of the source of our gods that come from the, from space, from the heavens, from space, and and that is the Temple of Seth in Abydos, Egypt, that has those carvings of uh, what looks like helicopters and jet airplanes and submarines and things like that. Uh, and how would they have known these uh, crafts if uh, that we have today if they uh, were not known at that time that they were carved here? And let's remember that the word Egypt in ancient Greek means Egypt means flying. E means flying over the Aegean, flying over the Aegean. Yes, if they were flying. Obviously, they must have had flying craft. So I'll leave a link below for you for this and the next one will be Paul Hellyer's re uh, recounting of uh, how the US has uh, very advanced technology that uh, is able to stave off uh, alien um, craft that enter the earth. That's very interesting. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.